I'm Jay. And I'm John. And we're Bucket List Travellers. And in this USA Travel Vlog, we're going to share how to travel the USA by train. We spent two months travelling up the east coast of the USA by train. And in that time, we visited 11 cities across six different states. So we're going to share our experiences of traveling by train through the USA, as well as plenty of Amtrak travel tips and tricks to help you plan your next travel adventure. Our first stop was Miami, Florida, and we loved the beaches. We loved the cool vibe and- The food was pretty cool as yeah, well. Yeah, the food scene was really good. Yeah, Central American influences there. It was really nice. Yep, and then we traveled through Florida, stopping at a few smaller towns along the way. We went to West Palm Beach, to Winter Haven, and to Palatka before moving up the coast. Then from Florida, we made our way to Savannah, Georgia, and I would say that was one of my favorite cities uh, that we visited in the USA. It was so beautiful. Mm. Lots of parks all scattered around the city, a great river area, a great food scene as well. It was just awesome. Yeah, definitely. The next stop on our trip was another really pretty city, Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah, and then from Charleston, we went to Fayetteville and Raleigh in North Carolina. We continued our journey on to Richmond, Virginia, Washington, DC, and then Baltimore, Maryland. And that's where we ended our train travel in the USA. Most of our travels along the east coast of the USA were done with the Amtrak rail. That was 1,900 kilometers or 1,200 miles. So that's a really long distance. And that was around 24 hours in total on a train. We broke up the journey quite a bit. So our train travel was generally between half an hour and four hours per leg of the journey. And our total trip cost was $291.75 per person. Now we're going to talk about what to expect when you get to the stations in the USA. So typically at the largest stations, you'll have amenities like free Wi-Fi, like public toilets, which are free to use. And there may be some shops and some food outlets. Smaller places may only have vending machines. There may also be automated ticket booths. Otherwise, there may be some station attendants that you can buy your tickets from if you decide not to buy your tickets in advance. In some of the smaller towns that we were in, the stations themselves were actually closed and you needed to buy your tickets previously online. Yeah, so do not expect the trains to be centrally located in the USA. We found that for a lot of places, the trains were a few miles out of town and they may not necessarily be well connected by public transport either. So you may need to organize your own transport to get to and from the station or expect a very long walk. The one exception would be the train station at Washington DC, which was really close to the Capitol building and within easy walking distance. Now we're going to talk about what to expect when you're on the Amtrak trains. Well, I found the train seats themselves very comfortable. Some of them recline, some of them have footrests. So that was very comfortable. Yeah, the, the overall experience was really comfortable once you were on the train. Yeah, mm. uh, heaps of space. Sort of, Overhead storage. Yeah, plenty of room to store your bags. So how's the storage here, John? Ample storage. So good if you've got more than one bag. And they've got different carriages which have different amenities. So you've got some carriages that have toilets in them, which are free to use. You've got a dining carriage. Now we did find that Wi-Fi was generally available on Amtrak trains, but we did have a few trains where the Wi-Fi was a bit patchy and sometimes they only worked in the dining carriage. So just keep that in mind if you're expecting to use the internet while you're on the trains. They do have electrical outlets for charging up your devices. Now they're the typical USA style plugs. They don't typically have the USB ports that we've seen in the seats that we chose. The electrical outlets are generally on the wall next to the window seat. So you may have to lean over your neighbor in order to get access to the port. And if you're unlucky, 
your neighbor may just hog both ports. So keep that in mind. We're budget travelers, so we just bought the cheapest tickets we could. If you're traveling first class, the experience is probably a bit different. The amenities in the basic economy style seats were pretty reasonable. Yeah. Now, we did get allocated seating. The seats were generally allocated to us when we got there. Sometimes the station conductors would ask, how many people are together and they try and seat groups together first before seating the solo travellers. So keep that in mind as well. So the seats had tray tables, so that made it easy to work on your laptop when you were travelling. And there's also air conditioning too. Now just be mindful, if you do feel the cold, it's worthwhile bringing a jacket or a blanket because it can get pretty cold in there. We booked our tickets through the Amtrak app. We initially used the Amtrak website, however, they ask for an American phone number. So if you're foreign and you don't have a US mobile number, then you won't be able to proceed in the form and book your tickets, which we found really frustrating. However, you can book tickets using the Amtrak app and that was pretty straightforward. Yeah, that was quite handy and then your tickets are stored on the app. You don't need to print them out or anything. You just need to show the, the digital copy of your ticket to the conductor and that's, that's pretty helpful. What I also liked about the app was that you could see how on time your trains were and they, they gave uh, very up to date uh, real time updates. Yeah, they gave you real time updates, which was really handy. And in our experience, the trains weren't always on time. So there was one example where the train was one hour late when we got on. And by the time we got to our end destination, the train was two hours late. So keep that in mind when you're traveling uh, on Amtrak. Yeah, and allow some buffer if you need to be somewhere at a certain time. And with your train tickets, there are conductors on board the train who will be checking your tickets both before you get on the train or while you're on the train. So they are pretty diligent with that. Make sure you have a ticket. Some general tips that we learned along the way with our Amtrak travels is that the first thing is that when you're booking your tickets, make sure you book at least five days before your intended day of travel because they use dynamic pricing. So the closer it gets to your travel date, the higher the price is gonna be. One example is that we were leaving West Palm Beach to go to Whitehaven. We looked at the price a week before, I thought that was fine. And then three days before the, the trip, uh, we booked and the price was double what we'd seen yes. five days earlier. So. That, that was a bit of a shock. Yeah, so to avoid bill shock, book as far in advance as you can. Keep in mind that trains in the USA aren't always that frequent. There's only maybe a couple of trains a day depending on your destination. Yeah, especially, especially down south. Especially in, in down south. You really do want to book as far in advance as you can to get the cheapest prices. Yeah, and also there are sometimes more than one railway service operating on a particular line. So for example, in Miami, there's the tri-rail uh, service as well. And so we chose that option and they generally had more availability in times and they were also cheaper. So it also pays to look on the Amtrak website to see if there are any special deals for the destinations you're looking at. Uh, so for one of our legs of our journey, we were able to get a 50% discount for booking ahead and on a Saturday, yeah. which, yeah, which was a nice little saving. Amtrak also does have a loyalty program, so you can get points for your fares if you sign up to the loyalty program. Now, in our train travels, those 24 hours of train travel didn't get us enough points to be able to use points through the Amtrak loyalty program. So just keep in mind, you may need to travel a fair bit before those points accumulate sufficiently. So now we're gonna talk about what we liked and what we didn't like so much about Amtrak. Yeah, so the first thing is the Amtrak app. I really liked the functionality of having all the tickets, all your tickets stored in the app. Um, that made it very convenient. And also having the real-time updates as to whether your train was late or on time was very handy. Yeah, and the ability to buy tickets as well was really straightforward. So we appreciated that. 
Hmm. And the trains themselves were really comfortable. I really liked the seats, how they reclined. They were really nicely padded and the footrests were a nice touch as well. Yeah, yeah. And it, it felt like the carriages were relatively new or at least well maintained. So it, yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, and you've got plenty of conductors on board to look after you. That's a nice little addition as well. Yeah, what I liked is that the conductors, they put a little sign on top of your seat indicating where your stop was. And just before your stop, they would come round and tell you that your stop was coming up. So I, f I found that really handy. And to balance it out, what didn't we like about the trains in the USA? Well, for me, uh, the proximity to locations was not great. So most, most train stations were on the outer parts of a city or a town. So, and they were not well connected by public transport. So once you got to the station, you're pretty much on your own. In the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. We love walking around. And so uh, we would prefer to walk to our next destination than uh, take, you know, take a taxi or an Uber. You can't really get around by walking unless you want to walk five miles, which is what we did in one instance. Yeah, so I guess the USA is more catered to cars. And so even when you take a train, I think they really cater to someone picking you up at the station rather than you being able to make your own way to your next destination on your own steam. Just keep that in mind when traveling by train through the USA. And the cost of the rail was higher than what we expected. And it's high relative to other countries as well. We've been traveling in Europe uh, by train and it was 30% higher for the same distances and travel times in the US relative to France, France and, and Italy. Yeah. Yeah. So part of that was being caught out and booking a ticket at the last minute and having that dynamic pricing. Well, it's like three days beforehand. Yeah. 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 So um, I guess in other countries you can leave things to the last minute, whereas in the USA, there aren't that many services, particularly outside of the northeast coast of the US. Now, if you book way in advance, then you probably do get some really good deals. And especially if you do look for the special offers that they have, then train travel can be quite affordable in the USA. But you really do need to plan ahead. And the number of services, particularly around Florida and the southern east coast of the US, are quite limited. Sometimes only one or two services a day so you do need to plan ahead in order to make sure that there's going to be a train for you we hope you found this video about train travel in the usa useful and helpful if you did give it a like and leave us a comment and we create a lot of travel videos with travel tips and travel inspiration from around the world so if you want to follow us on our bucket list journey to reach 100 countries then make sure you subscribe we are bucket list travelers see you next time Thank you.